Earnings reading is taken from Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. <clears throat> the Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The night shines in the dark. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. In himself, he himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. <coughs> children born not of natural descent, nor of a human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Sun, that's right, isn't it? Who likes lights? Anybody like lights? Adults, who likes lights? What would you prefer, everybody? Would you prefer the dark nights? Or the light nights? Yeah, I prefer the light nights as well. We love lights. And the best thing is, guys, that this time of year, people start decorating their homes with all beautiful lights. And I think that fills us with happiness and hope. In such a dark time of the year, when it is so dark so early, I can't believe it. And maybe it's just me getting old, but I feel like every year I go, it's four o'clock and it's dark already. Yeah, anybody else doing that? We just forget, don't we? And yet, to be able to put on those lovely twinkling lights on our homes or on our Christmas tree like this one here, just feels lovely, doesn't it? But I've got a question for you. What is the most powerful light? Do we know? What is the most powerful light? Benjamin, what do you think it is, mate? God. You know what? I was expecting people to say other answers. I'd be like, that's a great answer, but it's not the one I've got down here. But that is what I've got down here. That's exactly what I've got down. God is the most powerful light. Let's explain that a little bit more. We, see, we heard it from our passage, didn't we? And what I've got for you is um, I've got some pictures from the Hubble telescope. I, um, I, I just searched, in the beginning was the word. That was the first few words of John chapter 1 that Safra has read out for us before. And an image came up with those words on it and a beautiful night sky. And that started me looking at pictures of a Hubble telescope to put on the rest of our PowerPoint. I hope they're going to wow you. Okay? And I'll tell you why they should wow you in a little while. So here's one of the pictures from our Hubble telescope. And as John starts to write, this ancient writer, a man from 2,000 years ago, he wrote his book at great cost to his own life. Like John ended up being imprisoned. He ended up being tortured. And he went through all kinds of really awful treatments because people were saying, stop talking about this powerful light. And John said, I can't. I have to let you know. It's so good that I will give my whole life so that you can know about this powerful light. Aren't we glad that he did that? Because we can know about it today. So let's find out about this light. You see, first of all, it says this. In the beginning was 
the word. Now, children, your adults left school a long, long time ago, okay? So, I wonder if you could help us out. Can you see? Have I, have I got a little laser? Oh, look at that. Can you see that word, word? What's it got at the very beginning? Don't say a W. What's it got? Go on. A capital letter. Now, if a word has got a capital letter at the start of our sentence, why? why? What's it called? Do you know? A proper, a proper noun, right? Because it's a proper noun. Yeah. And what is it? Do you know? That's right. It's the name of a person or a place, isn't it? So here, when John writes, in the beginning was the word, and he uses a capital letter for the word word, he's actually talking about a person. He's talking about this most powerful light being somebody who has and does exist today. He's saying that one of the names I could call him, as he writes, is word. And he gives him three other names. So let's find out what he says. When he talks about this word, he's talking about a person. Lock that away in your head. And the first thing I want us to see is this, that the word is God. Have a little listen to what he says here. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and all things were made through him. Without him, not anything was made that has been made. John is writing about this really, really powerful light. And he says that he is God. Just as you said before, Benjamin. You can have a sweep for that, mate. I'm so impressed. He said that God created all things. That he was here even before we were even before this, these planets were, even before these wonderful images from the Hubble telescope where God has always been. The word is God. What else do we see? We also see, go on, Will, I'll let you, you click it instead of me, mate. That in him is life. And that life is the light for mankind. Have a little listen to this. Verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. That means all people, all humans. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. You see, this powerful light source, this most powerful light of all, is full of life. And I love that. I love that because we love life as well, don't we? Like for me, winter is not really my favorite season. My favorite season is summer when everything is in full throes of life. My autumn when the leaves start to fall off the trees. I know everybody says, oh, it's lovely colors. But I just see all these dead leaves falling on the floor that I've got to rake up. And I'm like, oh, it's like the life is going again. But to actually celebrate life is wonderful. That's why for us as Christians, we're so passionate about protecting life and then protecting all lives because in Jesus is life. And the Bible says that that life is light to all of mankind. We'll talk about that again in a second. But we've seen, first of all, that this light source is God. Secondly, that this life, uh, uh, light source has life in him. And then thirdly, well, that the true light has come for us. Have a little listen to this in verse 9. It says this. The true light, which gives light to everyone, is coming into the world. And verse 12 says, to all those who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. And verse 14 says this, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. So 
before I said to you, what is the most powerful light? And Benjamin said, it's God. And we've just talked about that light. But who is, Jesus, uh, who is John? Who is John focusing in on? Which part of God is, is John talking about? Go on. He's talking about Jesus, isn't he? Did you hear him? The word became flesh. We can replace that word with Jesus. Another name for him. Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory, the glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. So Will is going to help us out a little bit more now because I just want to very quickly go over on our three statements again and let's just focus in on Jesus this Christmas time. You still with me? You still awake? Turn to your friend and say, wake up. Wake up. There you go. Okay, fantastic. First of all, the word is God. Jesus is not a promoted angel. He's not a magician. He's not just a prophet. He's not somebody who's from history, who's some kind of lunatic. We, we heard a little bit about this on, uh, last night in, in our YPF. C.S. Lewis said that Jesus is either delusional, a madman, that he's evil, that he's seeking to trick people, or he truly is God. Because the claims he made, he was able to live up to as well. Jesus is God. Jesus has always been. He created the world. He created me and you. He created the wonderful galaxies that we're seeing on the screen behind me here. Jesus is God. Secondly, Jesus has life in him. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life in all of its abundance. And you know, just before he made that statement, everybody, he said this, the thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that you may have life and have it in all of its abundance. You see, if we try to find life in other places, it'll be good for a little while, but it won't last forever. There's some things that we're fed lies to as well. Uh, lies about that we're told that if you have this then you're truly alive if you have the bank balance or if you have the cars or kids if you get the grades as important as all those things are it could even be other things as well if you reject God then you'll really truly be living and you might be happy for a short time but ultimately all of those things just lead to destruction they'll all fade away nothing will last Apart from Jesus. What does Jesus say? I've come that you may have life and have it in all of its abundance. That life is the light to mankind. Sorry, we'll cut you off with a pause there. But that life is the light to all mankind. You know, this week I was at two funerals. One of them was at a graveside. And I said a few final words as we laid some, well, we actually laid three people to rest that day. And as we laid them to rest, the hope rang true of Jesus when he said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even though their body will die, they will go to live with me forever. That's light in our dark world. That's the light that we need Adults, can I speak to you for a second? As we look into our future, it looks dark, doesn't it? And it is totally understandable to be afraid of what comes at the end of this life. But Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. I'll hold you in this life and I'll hold you in death as well. That you will be safe in my hands for all eternity. You don't have to be afraid. You can know the great light of hope by trusting in Jesus. Thirdly and finally, and then I'll shut up, I promise. But this one, the true life light came for us. And I love that verse in uh, John 1, uh, 1 John, sorry, verse 14. It says this, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That word dwelt means, is, well, the, the Greek word is skinaru. That sounds posh, doesn't it? I just Googled it. But what it means is it means to 
pitch your tent or to tabernacle. And in the Old Testament, the tabernacle was a big tent that was put up in the center of the camp for the Israelites. So they knew that God was with them in the camp. And Jesus tabernacled with us. That's why he was called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. When Jesus was on this earth, he actually left footprints in the dust in the Middle East. He actually touched the wall and scraped off a little bit of the stone or the sand or whatever it was. He actually picked leaves off trees. That's how real Jesus was when he came for each and every one of us. Jesus is God with us. So what is the most powerful light of all? It's this. I've got it in a picture for you. It's Jesus. The one who created the galaxies. The one who flung the stars into space. The one who called them into being by name. And as he said their names, they burst forth in powerful and like power, power that we just can't get our heads around. Powerful force. And they've created these beautiful scenes across the sky. It's God's masterpiece at work when we look at the skies, isn't it? And that same God, in all of his power and all of his might, confined himself to a baby who couldn't walk, who couldn't talk, who couldn't feed himself, who was dependent on one of his own creation. Mary cared for him. Mary raised him. So much so was the scale of what Jesus did as he went from the magnitude to that small, small infant, to that baby. Why did he do it? Because he loves you. And because he loves me. And he came into this world. He grew up to be a man. He went to a cross that he didn't deserve. He took a punishment that we deserved. He paid that price for our sin in full. And then the Bible said, he resurrected again. He's alive today. And one day he will return. Can I ask you this morning, do you know the most powerful light? Your fairy lights will be really good. I'm sure they'll be really, really twinkly. But Jesus' light is even greater than our fairy lights on our tree. Jesus' light is the greatest light that we can know. And we can ask him to be our friend and ask him to forgive us of our sin. Let's stand.